Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen the title of this video and thought, okay, he's definitely lost his mind if he's making a video on how Hermione Granger could have become more powerful than Lord Voldemort. But make a video I did and I've got some really good points. In addition to that, this is Harry Potter folklore and I just love making videos that are completely outside the box. So how could Hermione Granger become more powerful or even as powerful as Lord Voldemort? Well, they're actually more similar than you might think, as their driven and ambitious personalities were key for both Voldemort's rise to power and Hermione's academic and magical achievements. Now, just because we didn't see Hermione reach the heights of power that the Dark Lord did, doesn't mean it was out of her reach. Let's continue the video. Before we start, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, Surfshark. This company have continued to sponsor me throughout these difficult times, so I'd be very appreciative if you kept watching and hear what I've got to say, as this product is really beneficial for you all. Surfshark offer you an incredibly powerful VPN to protect your internet privacy. In today's computer age, hackers are constantly trying to gain access to your bank account details, your social media passwords, and access to your personal information, amongst many other things. This can all be prevented when browsing under Surfshark's protection. Not only does it protect your privacy, it also offers you a lot more. Different countries have different viewing restrictions on what content can be viewed. Therefore, by logging into a VPN base in another country, you can gain access to that content that may be blocked in the country that you live in. For example, I've always used the Australia VPN, but it's recently come to my attention that you can gain access to the Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald movie on Netflix by using the Indian VPN, which is pretty cool. As I've mentioned, Surfshark have been sponsoring this channel for over a year, and they've given some great deals in the past, but this one is by far the best. If you join Surfshark today, you'll get 83% off, 3 extra months for free, you'll also be able to use Surfshark on as many devices as you like, there's no limits, and finally, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. Basically, if you're not happy, if you're not satisfied, then your money will be returned. It's a no-brainer, guys. So sign up to Surfshark right now by clicking the link in the description below. Okay, guys, let's continue this video. Now, I hope it's safe to say that I know I may not have been the first person to make a comparison between Hermione and Voldemort in terms of their approach on becoming the best that they can be and just their overall approach on life. However, to actually prove their similarities and that Miss Granger could indeed achieve such a power, we actually have to look at what separates them from each other. Now, as many of you may know, there has been tension between purebloods and muggleborns, and even muggles, for centuries. Well, it was more one sided as of later times, pureblooded magical people felt that magic belonged to them and was not to be shared with any other race. The ratio of muggles to wizards was approximately 5 to 1, or possibly even more, so it's clear who held the manpower if things did come to a head. What originally started as preserving the magical race and maintaining a healthy population soon turned into a racial driven war where a vast majority of wizard kind held the view that it wasn't the worst idea for the mixture of magical and muggle bloods to occur. The purebloods however felt that by doing so, it would filter or dilute the magical bloodlines, affecting the purity of magic and in turn, weaken the power of magic itself. That theory was believed for a very long time, and even still believed by some today. Even Horace Slughorn himself shared his surprise at how Muggleborn students excelled in his class despite their birth status, Harry's mother Lily being one of them. The truth of the matter is that it wasn't the amount of magical blood one had, it was all down to the magical gene. You either had it or you didn't. There was no certain level of power one could obtain by being pure blood over half blood or even muggleborn. That's actually proven by the existence of pure blood squibs, born with a dormant gene. 
With Muggleborns, it was a case of that gene being dormant throughout generations and then being awoken in a normal, thought to be Muggle child, which then led to the ridiculous belief that they somehow stole magic. Somehow deep down, I think that the pureblood supremacists knew that the purity of blood did not affect the magical power of an individual, but it was what they based their entire campaign on in order to purify the wizarding world once more. Now I know you might be thinking, okay, well what has all this got to do with Hermione Granger having the potential to be as powerful as Lord Voldemort? Well, as I said previously, I had to separate them for a reason because even though Voldemort was half-blood, it still meant he had wizard's blood in him, whereas Hermione did not, which is why Muggleborns were so frowned upon. Along comes Hermione and completely turns everything on its head by excelling to the top of her class in everything. She's better, smarter, more magically skilled and talented than everyone in her year, not just her class. That is not good for the purebloods. As a matter of interest, Hermione is a potential threat to everything that the pureblood supremacists represent, because by their beliefs, she's not supposed to be able to do even half of the things she can do. It's quite embarrassing for them, a muggle-born with no magical parents, having the magical ability to outperform every pureblood in her year, and I doubt there will be many second years or even third years who could take Hermione on either. In addition to that, I've read on several forums and even my own comment section on previous Hermione vids that some fans believe she wasn't actually that smart, that intelligent, that everything she knew was learned and memorised. Personally, I think that's ridiculous. Hermione's skill and talent came from her desire to be the very best she could be, something she shared with Voldemort. They both wanted to excel to the top, for different reasons of course. I also believe Hermione had somewhat of a photographic memory also, and her desire for knowledge really did set her above everyone else. She wanted to time turn her so she didn't have to miss either of her classes that crossed over, even if she didn't enjoy divination so much. I also really don't want this to be a comparison video where I go back and forth between Hermione and Voldemort showing all their similarities. I want to focus on what Hermione brings to the table that highlights just how great she could be, how the early signs were always there. What she didn't desire however was power itself, which made her the perfect candidate for greatness. She only lusted after knowledge, which in turn gave her a better oversight of power. I think it reflects both Voldemort and Dumbledore's mistakes as they only seen one aspect. It wasn't long before Hermione began making impact outside of the classroom. She'd saved Harry and Ron's life countless times, well at least once a year, or done something to help them out tremendously. She was always the person they could turn to in order to find an answer. Back in the classroom, there wasn't a spell she couldn't do. Even Draco Malfoy took notice of her skill, which for a Muggleborn would have surprised him greatly. The thing is, Hermione at that time had no idea of the changes she was making, that becoming the brightest witch of her age was actually groundbreaking as nobody had been as noticeable as she had. She was single-handedly destroying the stigma of Muggleborns being less powerful and less talented than purebloods. I think it's best represented in the Chamber of Secrets, actually that scene in the movie is one of the few I liked, where we see Lucius Malfoy, upon meeting Harry for the first time, was already aware of who Hermione Granger was, meaning he may have considered her a potential threat, especially from what Draco was telling his father. And while some of you may feel that she would have had to go down the same route and study dark magic like the Dark Lord, that's not entirely the case. She knew about dark magic from general research. Although she would not have used the spells, she'd be aware of their existence for starters. Albus Dumbledore is the prime example of that. Voldemort feared him more than anyone. Well, let's continue. Now guys, you can say what you like about the cursed child. It's not everyone's favourite story. It's not my favourite story. But one thing it does get right is Hermione's role as Minister for Magic. I think that was her reach. She went down the opposite path of Voldemort. Everyone expected big things from him, a glittering career in the ministry, but he sought something else. 
Hermione, basically, in my opinion, was everything Voldemort should have or could have been. I think what stands out about them both is that neither were pureblood and still went on to achieve the things they did. The disappointing thing is that there's 19 years of a career that's currently unwritten, so we'll never truly get to know the scale of Hermione's accomplishments, but from my perspective and my point of view, I believe she definitely could have become just as, if not more powerful than Voldemort. Guys, I always say this at the end of my videos, and somehow I feel that it's definitely going to happen with this one. If you disagree with me, then let me know down in the comment section below, or maybe there's something you'd like to answer yourself about this video, comment down below. Thanks again guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.